hello besties how are you today welcome back to my channel easy sewing with tyke to everyone coming across the channel for the very first time you are welcome it's so good to have you here my name is tyro cheers to all my new and returning subscribers thank you all so so much for your love and support i appreciate you all so on the channel today we'll be making this beautiful cup shirt with ankara fabric it will have a collar as well then a falling shoulder now i'm not sure if this falling shoulder is the right word to use so you can see here's a picture of what i mean of what i'm referring to so i recommend that you keep watching if this is something you're interested in you will love it so if you are here to subscribe please ensure that you do so like this video share leave a comment for me and put on the post notification bell to get notified when i post new videos okay thank you let's get started here is the fabric for today's tutorial but i'll be drafting on the pattern paper first just so that you can see it properly and you can understand better because of the print on the Ankara fabric. Note that you can draft this directly on your fabric. For tutorial purpose, I'll be drafting on this paper before transferring it to the fabric. Now, starting with the front pattern, the very first thing I'll be doing is to mark out the bottom placket, and that will be 3 inches. So I'll be marking out 3 inches all the way, like so. After which, I'm going to connect it and make it into a straight line. So after labeling that 3, inches space button i'm just going to come down by one inch and roll it across this one inch line is going to be my start point it does not mean anything okay i just don't want to start my measurement from the edge of the paper now from the start point i will start imputing all of my vertical measurements and the first one being the chest line the formula to get your chest line will be on your screen okay so after that the next measurement i'll be putting down is just the full length of the shirt since i'm making a crop shirt now if you are making a full shirt you can go ahead and put in your half length then go ahead and put in your full shirt length okay but since i'm making a crop shirt i'm just going to go ahead and put in the, my preferred length and that will be the and that will be the two vertical measurements we will be working with today the chest line and the full length of the crop shirt i'll just go ahead and roll all of that across so here is the chest line and here is the length it also doubles as the waist since it is a curb shirt and the next thing to do now is to start imputing the horizontal measurement since we are done with the vertical measurement and the first horizontal measurement we'll be putting down here is the shoulder measurement so the shoulder that we're working with is 16 16 divided by 2 is 8 but because this is a dartless shirt is a free shirt i'm going to be adding half inch to what i have there so i'm going to be measuring 8.5 then I'll take that same measurement on the chest line and I'm going to connect it like so. The next horizontal measurement is going to be the bust measurement. So again, because this is a free shirt, because it is darkless and I don't want it fitted, I'm going to go ahead and add 4 inches to my bust measurement. So the bust measurement is 38. 38 plus 4 is 42. So I'm going to go ahead and put that down. That is 10 and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and mark it out. Or you can go ahead and put in your exact bust measurement and just add one inch for ease you are still going to arrive at the same thing okay but if you want yours to be fitted then you do not have to do this just go ahead and put in your exact bust measurement after which i'll be adding my sewing allowance you can add between 1 to 1.5 inches and now to impute the waist measurement you can go ahead and repeat the same process that we did for the bust for the waist area as well that is add four inches or one inches depending on how free you want it to be but what i will just do is that i'm just going to subtract one inch from the total that i have for my bust measurements because i want it to be free around the waist as well so remember i have 10 and half there i'm so just going to put in nine and a half on the waistline then i'm going to be adding my sewing allowance which is one and a half inch then i'm just going to connect it together like so i'll go ahead and label this the allowance after which i'll be plotting the arm o curve for the front so from the start point i'll be coming down by one and a half for the shoulder slope then from the chest line i'll be coming up by two inches and on that two inches mark i'll be going in by half inch after which which i'm just going to connect the three points together like so 
the bust measurement to the half inches mark then to the one and a half inches mark for the shoulder slope now this red line indicates the front arm hole i'm going to go ahead and draft the back arm hole with the blue marker on the same pattern because i'm going to use the same pattern to cut out the back okay so you just want to divide what you have there into two and connect it from the bust measurement all the way just want to divide what you have left there after removing the one and half for the shoulder slope just want to divide it into two and just connect it so the red line is the front arm o and the blue line is the back arm o now for the neck width i'm going to make use of two and a half note that the two and a half is going to start after the bottom placket okay not after the bottom placket so i'm going to connect it to the one and a half inch for the shoulder slope that way and the neck depth is three inches for the front is three inches for the front i'm going to mark it then i'm just going to connect it like so from the bottom placket all the way to the shoulder i'm going to extend it to the bottom placket so you just want to do the same thing i'm doing on the screen right now now we are done with this front pattern but before we use it to cut out the back remember we are making a falling shirt a falling shoulder shirt what it means is that the shoulder line is not going to be directly on the shoulder but rather is going to come down towards the front okay it's going to fall now it's time to determine where you want your new shoulder line to be so i want mine to be just 1.2 inches after the original shoulder line so i'm just going to go ahead and measure out 1.2 inches and roll it across on the shoulder line like so now I'll go ahead to cut it out you just want to go ahead to cut out the shoulder slope don't cut out the neckline yet then cut out the back arm o only first then i'm going to go ahead and fold in this bottom placket because the back would not have this bottom placket the back would be on fold now i'm going to place this on another pattern paper to cut out the back pattern now it's time to extend the shoulder line it's time to manipulate this back pattern so you want to pay more attention here so what i'm just going to do is to trace out what i have there i'm going to trace it out you know that is the back arm o i'm going to trace it out all the way after tracing it out now we can go ahead and cut out the front neckline so i'm just going to go ahead and cut out the front neckline like so the next thing to do is to cut through that 1.2 inches that we marked for the shoulder extension i'm going to label it e so i'm going to cut through it note if you are making like a male shirt you can come down by two inches instead of the 1.2 that i decided to use for today's tutorial so watch this after cutting you just don't want to move it upwards like so no but rather you want to flip it that way yes this is what you want to do you want to flip it that way what we are just doing here is basically extending the back shoulder okay so that it can fall to the front so don't move it upwards that way there will be shorted in your measurement but rather you want to flip it by the time we are done cutting it out you would understand the reason why we are flipping it and not moving it upwards okay now i'm just going to go ahead and trace it out with um with the marker so i'm gonna have to cut out the excess so I, what i have left is what i traced out with the marker so you just want to go ahead and fold it that way so this is it can you see that there's no shortage at that um arm o line yes this is the reason why we are flipping it and not turning it if we had turned it there would have been a shortage at that shoulder area okay so you want to fold it this way now that it's folded this way you can now go ahead and cut out the back neckline so before putting in the back depth you want to go ahead and extend the width like so you want to go ahead and extend it then just cut it along that straight line once you are done with this just follow through with what you can see me do on the screen then you want to go ahead and measure half inch half inch so the back neckline is 2.5 that's two and a half by half inch okay so you're just going to go ahead and connect it like so then i'll go ahead and cut out the back neckline so this is it i hope that you understand now that i'm done i'm just going to go ahead and remove detach the front pattern and we cut the front arm o don't forget to record it so i'm going to go ahead and record the front arm o 
so here is the back i'll just go ahead and label it and here is the front so i'm going to show you how i'm going to fold the bottom placket i'm just going to fold one inch that way then i'm going to fold it so what i have there would be for my button and the button holes then i'm just going to go ahead and trim off the neck this is at the neckline that way now it's time to transfer this to the fabric for the front it does not have to be on fold and even if it's on fold you still have to divide it oh, you still have to divide it because of the button it's going to be opened at the front then you want to go ahead and add half inch joining allowance at the shoulder then at the m line i added two inches you can add one inch it's optional it depends on your preference whatever you want to use to m the m of the cup sheets so i added two inches to mine you can go ahead and add that or one inch then you everything else is the same we've already added sewing allowance to the side while drafting for the back is the same thing as well add your half inch allowance at the shoulder for the shoulder joining your allowance at the m then but make sure that your back um fabric is on fold the back is not open make sure it is on fold okay make sure the back is on fold so that is it i'll just go ahead and cut it out then we'll move to the sewing machine because we would need to join it first before we can draft out the collar so the first thing i'll be doing is to sew off that bottom placket area just like i showed you when we were drafting i'll go ahead and fold it twice fold it one inch in once then fold it again so i'll go ahead and sew this for both sides and this is what we have the next thing to do now is to bring the back and join it together at the shoulder join it together at both shoulder i'll go ahead and do that now and now this is what we have you can see that the shoulder joining has fallen to the front so yes exactly this is the falling shoulder that we want to achieve so you want to match up the arm all that way and notch the new shoulder line notch the new shoulder line because we would need this when we are fixing the sleeve so to cut the sleeve my fabric is on fold into four since i'm cutting two sleeves at the same time then the length that i have here is 11 and half the actual length of the sleeve is nine inches two inches folding allowance and half half inch to join it to the body next now i'll be doing is to calculate my cap height so to calculate your cap height please make use of the new bust measurement remember remember that the new bust measurement is 42 42 divided by 12 is 3.5 plus 1 is 4.5 so 4.5 is the cap height so i'll just go ahead and rule that then come up by two inches which is the m allowance i'll be folding it inside okay i'll be folding it inside before cutting it so on the cap height i'll just go ahead and put in the biceps measurement then the rest that i have there will be my allowance then at the end that way i'm just going to subtract one inch from whatever i have at my biceps then i'm just going to impute it there and connect it together after which i'll just draw a straight line from the bicep measurement all the way to the up, upper part that way then i'm just going to divide that what i have there into three and just and just go ahead and draw my curve so just follow through with what you can see me do on the screen and if you do not understand the link to my detailed video on how to draft your basic sleeve would be in the description box okay so you just want to check that out and here you can see the reason why i folded the allowance is so that when i'm folding it it's going to match up okay so you don't want to forget to do this then notch the midpoint for fixing the sleeve i'll just go ahead and fold the m the two inches that i added this way after which i'm going to match up the new shoulder line the new shoulder line with the center of the sleeve not the joining okay not the joining remember that 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 one has fallen to the front you just want to match it up with the new shoulder line then pin it down and fix your sleeve so i'll go ahead and fix my sleeve now i'm done fixing the two sleeve so before i join it at the side the next thing i will do now is to cut out my collar so to cut out the collar i'll go ahead and measure what i have on the neck that way i'll fold it into two this way and measure what i have so i have it and half that way which means my neck circumference is 17 17 inches which i will be using to cut out the collar so personally i prefer to cut out my collar on the art stay first since i'm still going to add a stay to the collar eventually so my art stay is on fold it's on fold i'll just go ahead and measure out the 17 inches that's eight and a half now on fold i'll go ahead and measure it out and roll it across and roll it straight line so i'll be drafting both the under collar and the main collar together before separating it okay so for my under collar i'm using 1.2 inches it's either you use one inch or 1.2 
1.2 is fine so i'll just go ahead and roll it across this way and connect the lines together and for my outer color the height would be two and a half i'll go ahead and roll it across as well so from the line connecting the under color and the outer color come in by one inch just follow through with what you can see me do then from that one inch slant it that way all the way to the edge of the outer color and from that same one inch you just want to have a curve to the edge to the lower part of the under color okay you can leave it as um square shaped or you can give it a curve like this so i'm going to give mine a curve now go ahead and measure out what you have at the back only remember that that joining is not where you start your measurement from but rather from the notched line then i have three that way so it's either you do this or you just measure out three and a half it's three and a half is like a standard just measure out three and a half then from that three and a half mark you want to come up by half inches at that edge like so then you just want to connect it with your ruler and give it a slant because the front neckline is not straight it is curved okay and since that is the place that is going to fall to the front that place is the center back is on fold here this curved part is the center front okay now the final thing to do is to replicate measure out what you have for your under collar and measure it out on your outer collar that way or you come down by one inch come down by one inch and connect it all the way to the edge the reason why we are doing this is that so that when you fold your collar it's going to overlap nicely you are still going to see that once i'm done making the collar so that it's going to over nice overlap nicely and sit well on your neck area so you want to reduce the outer collar at the center back this way now we are done with our collar so i'm just going to cut it out now so before cutting ensure that you label it if you are sh not sure of getting which side is which side make sure that you label the lower part and the upper part of both the outer collar and the under collar correctly okay so before separating the under collar from the outer collar i'm just going to show you the reason why that center back at the outer collar should be the same with your under collar you see so that when you fold it that way at the neck at the back it can overlap nicely so now i'm just going to go ahead and separate the two collar so now i'm gonna have to transfer to fabric you just want to add half half inch all around and you want to have two of these okay because it's going to serve as the main color and as the lining then i did the same thing for the outer color just add half half inch all around then you want to notch that lower place that place that you are going to join um at the outer color and the under color where you are going to join the two together that way you want to notch it make sure that you do so now starting with the outer collar, I'm just going to go ahead and sew it at the side and at the upper part, after which I'm going to notch it, then I'm going to turn it inside out, then iron it. And this is what we have, see how nice it looks, so you can just go ahead and run a few stitches at that lower part that way to secure it. So now the next thing to do is to join the outer collar to the under collar and this is how you want to do it. You want to sandwich the outer collar in between the two under collar, the lining and the main under collar, okay? Then add your add stay. You just want to take your time and arrange it, secure it with your pin, make sure that the midpoint is matching up. Then you want to go ahead and sew it using half an inch. So at the edge that way, you want to fold one of the sides this way. Just fold the half inches that way. You are going to know the reason why pretty soon. Then go ahead and sew it using half an inch. I'll go ahead and do that now. So after sewing, before notching and turning it inside out, I'm just going to use an M gum to secure the other half inch that I folded up words this way you'll be glad you did this because this would help you to achieve a very neat look when you are finally fixing your collar to the shirt okay so i'm just going to go ahead and use an m gum to fix this now and this is what i have so i'm going to go ahead and notch all the half half inches i sewed earlier then i'm going to turn it inside out now this is the collar it is ready to be fixed this is what I have after ironing. So you see that part? Yes, that's the part you are going to attach to the body of the shirt. So you want to fold it into two to locate the midpoint. 
and you will do the same thing for the shirt at the neck area locate the midpoint that way then you want to go ahead and match it up so here is how you want to match it up make sure that the midpoint uh, matches up then right side facing right side you want to make sure that that folded part that place that we folded with the m gum is facing the wrong side of the fabric this way okay so i'm going to go ahead and pin it down now with my pin then i'm going to sew it down so i'll be sewing it down using half an inch all the way okay so if you are yet to subscribe at this point please make sure that you do so if you are yet to like this video please like it as well give it a thumbs up and put on the post notification bell so this is it after joining now you just want to go ahead and place it this way you want to hide all those seams inside the collar this way then sew it neatly at the edge you can see the reason why we folded it with an m gum now you don't have to bother folding as you sew it's going to give you a neat look and this is what we have the collar has been neatly fixed so you can see that it is going to lay properly after it has been worn so this is what you want to have so the next thing i'll be doing now is to fold the m of the shirt itself i'll go ahead and fold the m all the way after which i'll go ahead and join it at the sides i'll join it at both sides using the sewing allowance i added to the outfit and this is what we have so far the shirt is almost ready so you can see the falling shoulder you can see the shoulder has moved to the front and it looks so beautiful so the next thing i'll be doing now is just to mark out where my button holes will be you can give a distance of 2.5 or 3 inches in between each um button then i'll go ahead and make my button hole and fix my button and voila that will be all for today so i hope that you enjoyed this tutorial i hope that you gain value and i hope that you'll be trying yours soon okay you can share your result with me via other social media platform it's easy so you will type on facebook and instagram also please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up like it share as well leave a comment for me let me know what you think okay so if you're yet to subscribe please do so as well thank you and see you in my next video bye